Welcome to DivHunt's tutorial on the magic of CSS Flex. Let's unravel this incredibly useful tool for web layouts. Ever wondered how to get these elements to align neatly? Enter a Flexbox. With just a couple of lines of CSS, Flexbox can turn a messy layout into a clean, organized space. It all starts with Display Flex. This tells your container that its children should follow the Flex rules. Now, let's talk directions. Flex items can flow as rows or columns. With Direction Row, your items will go in order from left to right. You can also set the direction of row reverse, then your items will be reversed and they will go from right to left. With Direction Column, your items will go in order from top to bottom, and with Column Reverse, your items will go from bottom to top in reversed order. Let's align these items, but how? With Vertical, you can align them vertically, and with Horizontal, you get to decide their horizontal position. Start, center, end or stretch. You're in control. If we want all items to be sticked to the top of the container, we can use Vertical Flex Start. If we want them centered, we can use Vertical Center, and we can use combination of Vertical Center and Horizontal Center in order for all items to be perfectly centered into the container. If you want your items to go to the bottom of your container, you can go with Vertical Flex End. And the last option into vertical alignment is stretch. This will stretch your items from top part of your container to bottom part. Let's put this option back to center and let's talk about other options into horizontal alignment. With horizontal flex end, you can push your items to the right part of your container. Next on the list is space between. What this option does, it pushes the first item to the very start and the last one to the very end distributing the remaining space evenly between items. The last option here is space around. Think of it as giving each flex item its own personal space on all sides. The items have an equal amount of space around them. What is the catch here? The spaces between neighboring items will seem doubled because they each have their own designated space. Let me put this back to stretch so I can show you one little trick here. What if you want to put this button to the bottom of this card and all the remaining content to the top? All you have to do is select your tag. In my case, I'll select this class because all of these buttons have the same class and they will get the same property. The property that I need to set is margin top to auto. This option will take all the available space it can to push the content away from the button. If you want some gap between your items, you can use column gap and row gap fields. With these fields, you can set precise gap you want between your items. With column gap, you can set the gap between your items in a column. And to demonstrate your row gap, let's put these items in a column and let's center them. When I input a value in a row gap, you will notice that my cards now have gap between rows. And finally, let's talk about wrapping. To demonstrate you how wrapping works, let's duplicate this card four more times. All of my cards will now be squished. Some of them will even be pushed out of the container. To fix this, I can enable flex wrap. With this option, all of my items will be pushed in a new row when there is no enough space for them. This option is perfect for responsiveness. After we went through all of those options, let's see what new properties will our items get when they have flex parent. First on the list is sizing. With this, you can control how much your item will shrink or grow, dependable on the free space of a parent. This property sets an element to be flexible. It can grow and shrink from its initial size. When distributing free space, this item will equally share with other flexible items. This property defines a flexible item that won't grow beyond its initial size, but can shrink if there's limited space using its content size as starting point. So if I go and change this text length, you will notice this item will be shrinked. And again, if I go back to the design and set this second option, you will again notice that it will grow in width. This property means the element won't grow or shrink from its original size, determined by its content or specified dimensions. It remains as is regardless of free space or overflow in the flex container. 
If you feel limited with these options, you can always go to these three dots and manually input some values. You can input anything you like here and items will follow. And that's it for desizing. Let's reset this option and let's talk about some other options here. Next on the list is order. With these options here you can control in which order you want your items to go. First on the list is auto. With this option you can set your items to be automatically aligned inside of a container. You can also set them to be always first or if you want you can set them to be always last. Or if you're not satisfied with these options you can manually input orders in your items. But for this method you would need to input a value in every item. After you do that then you can select item you want to reorder, click on these three dots and you can input manual value here. Because my fourth block also have the value of 4, my second block will be placed before my fourth block. And if I input biggest value here, my block will be placed last on this list. And for the last option, let's go back to our previous example. The last option is self-align. With this option, you can separately control the alignment of your items. If you set auto, your item will follow the direction of its parent. With flex start, you can push it to the top of your container with center you can center it, flex end will push it to the bottom of container, stretch will stretch it from top to bottom and you can also align it by the baseline. And that's the power of flex alignment. With just a few properties you control where and how your items sit within their container. Thank you for tuning in, don't forget to subscribe to DivHunt for more tutorials. Until next time, happy building!